Here we are once again with student loan forgiveness back in the news. Today I'm going to go through what loans may be forgiven, where this stands from a legal perspective, and how you should think about paying off your loans. But first, if you find this type of content helpful, please consider liking and or subscribing or just leave an angry comment. OK, so quick recap. Back in August of 2022, Biden announced a student loan forgiveness plan that would permanently cancel up to $10,000, $20,000 for some for most federal student loan borrowers. This ended up being roughly around 40 million people and the estimated cost was over $400 billion. In the summer of 2023, the Supreme Court struck that down, indicating that the Biden administration did not have the authority to forgive those loans. In April of this year, 2024, Biden announced a new student loan forgiveness plan that was set to be implemented this fall. And that plan reduced the number of people that it would impact, reduced the cost, and really focused in on a specific group of people. So here is that proposal. Now keep in mind, this is all federal student loans. Number one, it would provide automatic relief of up to $20,000 of the amount by which a borrower's loans currently exceed what they owed upon starting repayment. So let's say you took out a $30,000 student loan, you've been repaying on that, but the interest has caused it to accumulate to $40,000. Well, under this plan, $10,000 would be forgivable, bringing down your balance down to what it was when you started your repayment. And the max amount to be forgiven under those circumstances would be $20,000, regardless of income. Number two, for those making under $120,000 for single tax filers or $240,000 for married filing joint, and enrolled in an income-driven repayment plan, there would be forgiveness for the full amount by which the student loan balance had grown since being on an income-driven repayment plan. So similar to number one, but there would be no limit on that forgiveness if you're under the income limit and on an income-driven repayment plan. Seems counterintuitive to me that you would have these income-driven repayment plans where the minimum monthly payment is less than the interest. That's essentially what happens with credit cards and, and how that debt just snowballs. And I feel like unless you change how those income-driven repayment plans are structured, then this is just gonna keep happening. Number three, there would be complete loan forgiveness for undergraduate borrowers that have been repaying on those loans for at least 20 years. So since on or before, for July 1st of 2005 and for graduate borrowers who have been paying for at least 25 years. So since on or before July 1st of 2000, that's a long time to be paying a student loan. Number four, provide forgiveness to borrowers whose debt came from institutions or programs that lost access to federal aid. So some colleges will lose federal funding if they fail to meet federal standards as it relates to student outcomes. So for example, if they fail to meet gainful employment requirements or you have very high student loan default rates, the low financial value institutions is how this proposal describes those colleges. Number five, relief for those who are otherwise eligible for relief under existing forgiveness opportunities but have not successfully applied due to paperwork requirements, bad advice, or other obstacles. So it sounds like for those people, they wouldn't even need to go through an application process. Their loans would just be automatically canceled. And then there's another proposal separate from this one, but relating to student loan forgiveness that would cancel student loans for people undergoing significant financial hardships. They have significant medical debt or you know childcare costs, things like that. But again, that's a separate proposal and not included in this one. So those are all the people who would be covered under this student loan forgiveness program. It's estimated that that's somewhere between 25 to 30 million people with an estimated cost of about 170 billion. And a good chunk of that is due to the fact that rather than just forgiving everybody's student loans under a certain amount, they're really just trying to deal with that runaway interest that a lot of people have experienced. My biggest concern with this is what's to stop this from happening again in the future? Yes, you help tens of millions of people and that's a huge relief for those people, but what's to stop even, even from those people getting back into the same position again. I don't know. All right, so where's this at from a legal perspective? Because that's what's been popping up in the news lately, and there's a lot of articles that seem contradictory, so let me explain. So back in September, right when this plan was supposed to be implemented, you had seven states that filed a lawsuit against the Biden administration. Those states argued that the Education Department had no authority to carry this out. And then a few days after that, a U.S. District Judge, J. Randall Hall, in Augusta, Georgia, issued a temporary injunction putting a pause on the plan until there was an opportunity for the courts to review the legality of the student loan relief. That injunction was set to expire and allowed to expire by the judge on October 3rd, which is when you start seeing all these articles announcing great news for student loan relief. That judge removed Georgia from the case, saying that it would not experience any legal harm under the debt relief plan. Well, immediately after the Georgia injunction expired, a Missouri-based U.S. District Court judge, Matthew Shelp, I think that's how you say his name, issued once again, another injunction blocking the Biden administration from executing this plan. And just a clarification on what an injunction does, it's a court order that blocks an action, in this case, student loan forgiveness, until the courts can have time to review in more detail. So once again, it is on hold. I think that might have been the shortest window of time between when these student loan borrowers were given some hope and, and when that was kind of smothered again. So what now? Well, I think this has continued to go back and forth between the courts and the administration through the election. I don't think this is going to get solved anytime soon. So here's my advice to those with student loans. Just pay it off. 
I know people that have been waiting for student loan forgiveness since 2020 and interest just continues to accrue. And I know some of that was 0% interest, but you could be waiting forever and interest could continue to accrue. Just come up with a repayment plan that you can stick with and just keep grinding. As somebody that graduated college with almost $90,000 in student loans, I know it sucks. I know it feels like it's never going to end, but it, it never will end if you're just waiting for somebody to, to rescue you. And let me tell you this, I know this is not, uh, popular. This is not what people want to hear. Nobody's coming to save you. No politician or political party or promise is going to pull you out of your financial situation. Yes, those things impact your wallet, as we've seen with inflation and taxes. And there's just things that are outside of our control. But in the end, our individual financial situation is our personal responsibility. And that doesn't mean it's going to be easy. A lot of the times it's difficult. It sucks. It's not fun. But I think the sooner that we realize that, that it's our responsibility and we can do something about it, the sooner that we can do the hard things that will eventually get us to financial freedom.